Good morning, morning, uh, guys. Right. So I guess you don't have Sister Grace this morning to hide for you to the point <laughs> this morning, but we, as I said, we pray with them, for them, for whatever uh, the issues uh, that is going on. We lift the name of the Lord higher. Okay, so let's get into it. Father, we thank you again. We come into your presence again, that whatever, Father, Lord, that is needs to be covered. Um, as I have prayed and I've said this morning, that, Father, it's not me, but you, you inside of me, your spirit inside of me, whatever has been led, it's because of you. And we thank you, Father, Lord, as we come and open up ourselves, cry out to you, speak to you, communicate, prayer, calling on to you, as you have asked us and you've told us to do. We, Father, Lord, thank you that as we are hearing these, uh, whatever has been, will, will be said, whatever is already said, that, Father, it will be of you today, that our lives will go away, be impactful, that it won't just be, uh, well, it won't be a good word, but it will be a God word. It will be a word that, Father, Lord, is in season, on time, to yet stir our hearts and our minds, to help us to through what we're going through, and yet, Father, so that we will bank it inside of our spirit, as you said, hide the word in our hearts that we may not sin against you. Father, Lord, we are praying that we will bank it inside, that when the time comes of challenges, Father, we'll be able to use all these that we have learned across the years. So we bless you and thank you for this moment, this time, for the ministry, for the platform, in Jesus' most wonderful name we pray. Amen. Wow, that guy is speeding down like that. Okay. So this morning, um, what I'm going to talk about this morning is being transparent. Being transparent. Now, I was uh, on, on Saturday, I think I was on the, the prayer clinic. Uh, I joined there, I think I joined a bit later because of one reason or another. Um, and of course, Pastor Grace was going through and the Holy Spirit just laid that on my heart, just being transparent. And of course, in that sense, it was a minister, well, I actually was speaking about this. And it, actually, the Lord has down it on my heart, but this is actually a word for the season, according to everybody, for everybody's life, because he wants us all to be transparent. He wants us all to be open. He wants, you know, and one of the analogies that I was actually using is shops. You know, when you go on the high streets or any any shops in general, now it becomes a uh glass front rather than just a brick wall with a small tiny window that you have to go into um, and how shops have been transformed um, you're talking about from the 1800s to uh, coming up of what are we 2024 how shops have transformed um, according to the front space I used to work in retail so uh, I know a lot, a lot about the how they use window displays to attract how they use window displays as according to the the uh, if you go to most shops now all their glass for, uh, all their the front of their stores or shops are glass so glass from top to bottom and the job i'm doing now um which is uh you know being in the engineering uh, the communication field um obviously we have to work sort of like uh going up on ladders over shops and sometimes we can't do it why because the new thing is that we have to drill into a wall to be able to stabilize our ladder, to be able to go up and do the job effectively while keeping ourselves safe. But at the same time, we cannot because all the glass, all the shop fronts are glass. They just glass, right? So it's very effectively when, when people are talking about merchandising, uh, they always look at the concept of what people are seeing. How are they uh, looking into a shop? So I'm just using that analogy this morning because that's what the Lord has led with at that particular moment of time. And we will also look at, uh, you know, like I said, I'm just using my work as experience because that's that's all I could use what I what I know. And um, many times I go into houses. According to now, I go from house to house, uh, do my job. And now you go to houses. Sometimes the outside looks so or let's just say it doesn't look very attractive. It does, don't look very great. But when you actually get into that place, it's it's like it's like Buckingham Palace. You're seeing from the outside and it's inside, and you're thinking, 
what is going on? Wow, it's beautiful in here. You know, you're thinking, I, I couldn't see this from the outside. So we'll, we'll talk about different variations um, of these. But the first, obviously, one, uh, which we will look at scriptures, Matthew 5. Um, yeah, it's not Matthew 6, 33, don't worry. It's Matthew 5. Uh, I think it was 37, but we look from, I think it was 33 or 34, going downwards. Um, and then we look at that. And I think also talk about, I think it was Habakkuk 2, 2, if I'm not mistaken, Keith. Uh, I'm sure this is one of your favorite scriptures. Write a vision now, make it plain and clear so that anyone can pick it up and run with it. Um, we will also look at that as well. Um, as according to incorporating that into what the message is today, right? So um, I won't say the message is titled "Being Clear," but I would say, if if I should go with it, I would say live visibly, live clear, live open. You know, you got to live that way. And I know it's kind of crazy sounding title, but it is what it is. And in Matthew five uh, thirty seven, he said, "Let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Let your yes be yes." You know, be no. I'm just kind of like go through the King James Version, then go through the uh, New King James Version, and then I'll be so. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Uh, it also states in the next part of that, because anything else is of the evil one. In fact, let me see if I could grab that. Uh, share my screen and uh, hold on. unless Keith, you've got it up already. Uh, in on your Bible or whatever you can share, that would be lovely. But let's see. Screen. Right. And I will change it from the King James Version because I do like the King James Version. Can you guys see my screen? Let me know because I can't see if you are. Yes. Thank you, Keith, for yeah, replying. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's change let's change a version of that, shall we? Uh, so let's change King James version to Amplified. Let's change it to Amplified, right? So it's in the in the first couple of verses on the top, right? Obviously, he's talking about don't swear by any. Like, literally, it's like he was saying, like Christ was saying, look. Just don't swear at all, okay? But even if you have to, it, you, it, as in old, the, the Old Testament, you're not allowed to swear. If you're making a swear or declaration or whatever, it has to be, uh, as in according to the name of the Lord. He has to be on God. Nothing else, no one else, and he explains reasons why, right? So he says, uh, 33, funny that Matthew 6 33 Moses 33 5 33 um again you've heard it so this is 33 I'm going from again you've heard it was said to, to the man of old you shall not make false vows but you shall fulfill your vows to the Lord right you shall not make false that you shall not make false vows but you shall fulfill your vows to the Lord so basically if you make a vow Listen, God knows your heart. He knows your intention. He knows He knows you in and out, right? You cannot fool God. So some people might make vows and they will say in front of God or to God, whether it be in your quiet place or whatever, and they'll say, Lord, um, you know, I promise to, if you give me this, I will do that. And you make a vow. But God will know if that vow is true or not. You know if you're just saying it just to get what you to get the hand of God rather than the heart of God. God will know. He ain't stupid. So he will know. So again, going towards being clear, being being upfront, being true to what you say. Right? So you don't make false uh, false vow. He knows your heart and intention. So he was saying back then, if you're making a vow. You make whatever you have said, and it, as it says in the second part, but you shall fulfill, you, it's, it's funny this statement, isn't it? But you shall fulfill your vows to the Lord. So it's making a statement up there to say, don't make false, uh, uh, a false vow. But whatever you vow, 
you need to do it. Which means that don't say you're going to do something and not fulfill it to the Lord. You can't say it and not fulfill it. That's what it's saying. You don't come to the Lord and say, Lord, blah, 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 and not fulfill it. Thank you for the blood of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Father Lord, that you have uh, caused us to have mercy. <laughs> because, Father, if it was by this source, that a law, as was then, if we're still living under law, we would have been dead a long time ago because of this. Many times that we have promised you to do certain things, and we have broken it. So we ask you for your forgiveness and to help us in our dedication and our walk with you to be transparent, fruitful, and true, and to do as we said in Jesus' name. Amen. So as it says here on the, on the, where you can see here, it says, as religious duties. So <laughs> religiosity, we spoke about this many, many times. I don't need to go over that. As religious duties, right? But not with the heart as religious duty, but not with the heart. So let me break that down uh, because I think that's a valid point there. So sometimes we could vow to the Lord to do certain things, but we do it not with our heart, but we do it as a religious service. Oh, we have to do I have to do it anyway. Oh, I have to do this. Oh, you know, it's a part of my duty at church. It's a part of this. It's a part of that. But there's no heart in it. And maybe we have vowed to the Lord that, Lord, thank this is what I want to do. Um, I joined this team because my passion was for this. But somewhere down the line, it's now taken over and become a religious duty, a religious act, rather than to say, Lord, or the Lord saying, remember when you have said, or you have dedicated yourself to me. But now you're just giving me religiosity. So even though you're doing what you're saying, as according to you're doing what you have vowed to do, but you're not doing it in your heart. You were doing it maybe at one stage, but then lost the flow on the other side, or at, at another point in your life, right? So again, that's why you have that little bracket, which is nice, that, that is there as a, relig as, as a religious duty. Sometimes we could say that we're performing the vow, but Lord, look, I'm doing it. Lord, look, I'm doing it. But are you doing it onto me? Or are you doing it for the, because you have said and you're just doing it for that sake? But not with the love of God in my heart, not with the love of God in your heart. The Lord said we should, uh, Lord said we should look after one another. The Lord said we should love one another. But I'm only doing it because the Lord says, but what about your heart of loving the people truly? Are you actually loving people or you're just doing it for a front? Are you just saying you could call on me when you're ready anytime, brother? That's what the Lord says is to love, to love um, your neighbors as our Christ love you. Don't worry, brother. But then soon as the phone or, or even the fact that you go to help those person or people, but you're grumbling inside. You're bitter. Oh, why does this person have to call me this, this late at night? Why do I have to get out my bed at this time? Oh, I don't want to go. Oh, man. And you go with a bitterness, not a readiness to serve in the capacity of heart. Hopefully that's making sense so far. Being clear. Right? And it says 34, but I say to you, do not make an oath at all. <laughs> right? It stresses there. Do not make an oath at all. Right? Either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth. For it is the footstool of his, uh, sorry, footstool of his feet, or by Jerusalem, for it's the city of the great king. Nor shall, and most of you guys might be looking at great king in that sense, it's in capital there. So most sense people were thinking of, okay, the city of David or the city of, no, he's talking about the city of God, which is uh, the, uh, the great king, him, Yahweh, Christ Jesus. Yeah, Yeshua. The great king, his city. Um, 36 says, nor shall you make an oath by your head, even by your own self. You know, people swear on themselves and all that kind of stuff. By your own head, for you are not able to make a single hair, white or black. The Lord is saying here, you don't have control of what happens in your life, in life itself. Hence why he's saying, 
do not make it yeah, okay put it this way if i have control loads of people says they will come to you like i think when jesus went to Pilate and said look you don't, don't you know i've got the power to basically save you or put you to death jesus replied to him, man you have no power over me yeah according to what the father gives you that you have power over that's about it you have no power over me no jurisdiction the lord is saying there's nothing that you can control and people will tell you that you know i could fire you from your job because i'm the boss but they're basing it on what they think but the lord said well you you cannot control anything i'm the one that control it someone will be threatening you in your job I'm going to make you lose your job. And God turned it around that they lose their job. I'm just using that as an example. Because God wants to preserve you. There's nothing that people control. God controls everything. So swear not by anything. Make any oath by anything. Um, or by the earth. Uh, sorry, I'm going back there. For the great yeah, 36. Nor, nor shall you make an oath by your head. For you are not able to make a single hair white or black. Yes, 37. But let your statement be yes, yes, or no, no. And it says in bracket, a firm yes or a firm no. Sometimes we say yes to things because we, let's just say we, we, we want to make the person or people or to feel okay, to feel better, to have a hope, to have something or whatever it is that you're saying as a yes to. But the thing is, if you cannot commit to something, do not say yes. Do not say yes. Right? Because, that, and I mean, to, to be honest, even me, I have to ask for forgiveness now because our, our, um, one of our brothers, he had a. Uh, He's a comedian, and he had a show at our church um, for Mother's Day. And he said to me, he simply, he simply just said to me, right, um, are you coming on thingy thingy, blah, blah, blah. And he explained, obviously, you know, that uh, in Nigeria, obviously, he, he's got a great audience there. But over here, he's starting things new, and, you know, he's building from, from that. And obviously, this will be one of his uh, uh, second or first, uh, second or third event he's done in uh, this year already since he's migrated here and it says basically if you're coming now i then knowing the back of my head that my wife has already told me that look um they're taking out uh they're taking out um her mom for dinner and stuff like that so basically we working around can we make it and can we not but obviously we know the bottom line is that we're not going to it's just not never it's not going to happen so i said yes you know i'll i'll, I'll be there because he said, are you going to be there? And I said, yes, with my face kind of screwed up a bit. Now, that's a lie in itself because I know for a fact <laughs> that it's a great possibility that I'm not going to be there. Yes, I might have a hope in my heart that I want to be there because I even said to my wife, I said to, to Voke, I said, look, wait, can we get the tickets? You know, we're trying to work out how we can. Yes, I was trying to make every effort, but still I know that is a greater possibility of a no. Maybe I should have said to, to him, the brother, that look, I'm not too sure if I can or not, and lay the plans before him or whatever, or to say, no, I can't make it. Let your no be your firm no. I, well, I can't make it, sorry. You know, because of A, Y, A, B, and C or whatever. And sometimes we look at this and we're like, yay be yay and our nay be nay. Sometimes we know that we can't do a thing. And we end up saying that we can do it. Put the other person on a false hope. Make ourselves, be ourselves something that we're not. Or something that we cannot do. That we say that we can do. Let your yes be yes. And your no be no. Let it be firm. If you know you cannot, you cannot. If you can. And you say that you can, you have the capacity that you can, then do as you have said. Not when it comes up to the time and you get a bit lazy in the bed, you can't get out, you know, brother. Let your yes be yes, your no be no. I'm off on that day and I'm coming around to you, brother, 
to give you a hand in whatever you want. Or my sister, you said that, da, da, da. So I let it be a yes. And you get up, you go with a cheerful heart. Not a heart of despair, not a heart that, oh my God, not a heart of, no, you said that you would, so be as it is. And don't worry, like I said, you just heard me. I just have to be repentant. I'm talking to myself as well. Yes, let your yes be yes, and let your no be no, right? Affirm yes or no, as in bracket. It, and then it says after that, as according to you, see the semicolon up behind that, it says, Anything more than that comes from the evil one. Anything more from that comes from the evil one. So again, using my experience or my what I've just shared, knowing that is a greater possibility than I might not be there, even though I would, yeah, I'm saying, you know, let me try it all the ways I can get around it. But knowing that I've got a commitment, probably during uh, just a half, latter half of that time. I know. So which means now it's like the devil saying, just just tell him that, just tell him that you'll be there. Just just give him hope. Just to and it sounds like a good thing, you know, just to, to just to encourage him and stuff like that. Just to, you know, make him feel okay. You know, just to uh, um you understand what I'm saying? Just to just to so it it now becomes feel like it's a godly thing that you're doing, that you're encouraging a brother. That you're you're lifting a brother's spirit up. That you uh, you know, but actually that that's not from God. That's that's from the devil. That's from the evil one whispering in you just to say the lie to make him feel good. But what's the worst thing could happen is that the day comes and he will say to me, Brother, where were you? I thought you say you were going to be there. And then I'll be like, uh, you know what? There's a plan come through. What will then be in his heart, perhaps? I'm not making assumptions, but what will be in his heart? We can look at the views that he might have had, which is he says, oh, that brother lied to me, man. I thought he said he would be there. He's not a true brother. I'm just using these loosely. You know, he said that he would do this, but he didn't. He could have been like, oh, well, you know, at least you 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 said or you made an effort. But at the same time, he still feels displeased. He still feel hot, uh, just a bit lower because you he thought you would have been there. Maybe he was looking for you to be there. But I have then said that I could have, but then actually can't make it as according to I knew. If that was something maybe happened, but I was on my way and something happened, then I could say, you know, this is what happened, blah, blah, blah. That's the honest truth. You're being open. You're being transparent. And when we're coming to the Father, the Father wants us to be approaching with the same heart, being transparent. Be open. Because you're like an open book before the Father. There's nothing you can hide from the Father, right? So be transparent, be open, come to the Father. If you're angry with the Lord, be angry. Say, Lord, I'm upset with you. The Lord loves that. He loves when you come into him. Because guess what? You're praying either way. Am I right or wrong? You, you are praying either way. Why? Because when you say, Lord, why didn't you come through for me? And you get heated and you're passionate and you say, Lord, you make me want to dislike you. Guess what? You are praying to the Father. You are talking to God. So when people say, you know, you can't, you can't get angry at God for this. Yes, I can. I can get angry at God. Am I not a human being that has emotions just like God? Remember, we're made in the likeness and image of God. God has emotion. What did he say? I'm a jealous God. So let there be no other God than me. I'm a jealous God. So what does that mean is God could be jealous of you going across to somewhere else to worship. As in worship another uh, deity, another whatever it is. Have no other God than me. He's a jealous God. He has emotion. The Bible says Jesus wept. He, he's not, he, he, there's no infirmity that he cannot be touched by. He has feelings. He 
Hence why he's designed us and created us to have feelings. That's why he's allowed us with a free will to actually be able to make decisions. Yes, sometimes we get it horribly wrong. Sometimes we get it wrong. Sometimes we get it right. But we have emotions. We have feelings. So that brother might have gone into a different state of emotion. And that was based on me not being honest and open to let my yay be nay, uh, let my yay be yay, as my yes be yes, and my no be no. Let us be, God wants us to approach him openly. God does want to approach him with the heart wide open. We angry? Father, I'm angry. I'm angry with you, Father. Because, and let the Lord reply. Give it to him. How can we say we're giving our cares and our burden? What, is our cares only the things that we are hoping for to the Lord? And we are saying, Father, Lord, in this positive manner. But what about when we feel that the Lord has disappointed us? And don't pretend on the line here like none of us has been felt, felt like the Lord has let us down. We cannot say, none of us here can say that we have not felt like that. Because one way or another in our souls and our spirit and our mind, we might be saying, Lord, I've asked you for this thing for how long? Lord, this thing has come. Lord, why did that? You said uh, that um, healing is the children's bread. Father, you said you will bless my bread and my... You said, Lord, that... Come on now, brother. Us... Come on, come on. Bless, bless you, my sister. Sir. None of us. So let us come to the Lord openly. Transparent. So when we come to the Lord transparent, guess what? The Lord will deal with whatever is inside. It's not like he cannot see it, but when you come with pretense to the Father and you're not being open, what that happens is the Lord wants you to, even though he knows it's there, he wants you to bring it. He knows where you're hiding your skeletons in your closet. He knows where the basement is, where you chucked all the things in there. That He knows where it is. But he wants you to go there and say, Lord, you know what? Today I'm going to do a spring clean, and I'm going to show you everything in my house. Even my secret stash, my secret box. Wherever these things are, I'm going to show you where they are. I'm going to open it up to you and bring it. And bring it to the Father. Because the Lord wants to clear you of all these things. Why? Why does the Lord want to clear you of all these things? Because he wants to clear you so that you will be clear enough to others that when people now see you, they will clearly see who? See the Father through you. Through your glass. Through what you're displaying in your shop. The Lord wants to, to use you as a tool in his hand that he says that, yes, we are like tools in his hand. He wants to use you as a ways of mean that people will see him. Because God is a spirit. God is a spirit, right? So you cannot see God, so to speak. You cannot see God. But through you, People may know, come to know God, come to feel God, come to see God, come to know Him. Because He's made you in His likeness and image. So He wants you to be transparent like He is transparent to be able to see God in you. But when your mirrors or your glass is dirty and stained and you have not cleaned your shop front for many years and people cannot, when they're passing by your shop, they cannot see what's in your shop. Guess what they will go? They will go to the next rivalry. They will go to the next shop because they cannot see what is in your shop. But yet you are displaying on the inside God, but nobody is seeing God. I'm hoping I'm making sense so far. <laughs> right? So, God wants us to be transparent. And first, where does it start? With you coming to God, you 
coming to God, being open to God. And I'm not, I never said come to man and be open. Listen to me very carefully. Come to God and be open. Thank God for the day that he has shed his blood. He has went on the cross. And what did the Bible say? The veil of the temple split in two, which means we no longer need a earthly priest, but we have the, uh, the Holy Spirit, the, the priest, the, the, the um, old holy priest, the one that yet we can go directly, as the word of God, we can go directly to the throne of grace. Listen, I'm not saying that you, you can't go and talk to your pastors or whoever. Of course, by all means, we are people, we need human interaction. But at the same time, know that you, can, you first come to the Father. You first come to the Father. I think there's a book by a Muslim guy. He's, he's um, part, sadly passed away now. Um, he had um, cancer and he passed away. Well, God uses his life very well. He was a Muslim. He became Christian. And I think he wrote a book, um, and it was um, Seeking Allah and Finding Jesus. I think that was the title of the book. So basically, Seeking Allah, and he found Jesus, right? So in that sense, I thank you, Keith, for putting those in the chat, uh, the scriptures. The scriptures are in the chat, so uh, if you want to take notes of those, please do. So in that sense of him seeking Allah, he's found Jesus. And he, he said, when he, when he was listening to his testimony, he's like, every Muslim will come to a point where they will question their faith. Where they will, they will, they will, they will I tell you what, they have to question their faith. All of them. They will sit and they will say, Allah, I want to, where are you? Allah. Where are you? Um, Allah, if you said this, Allah, this, this, and this is what you said in Quran. Allah, Allah, Allah. They will question it. And they will ask if they become a real true, if they really want to seek the truth, they read their Quran. Not, not many Muslims read their Quran. I'll tell you that for a fact. All right? And they will ask. But they will seek, they will go and sit down and seek. But while they're talking, they're not realizing that they're talking to a greater entity. The Lord God Almighty when they're trying to find truth. So guess what? They're seeking. They're looking. They're going to him openly. Saying, well, I want to know who's the true and living God. I want to know if it's, well, I'm not sure if they say Allah or Jesus, but they, they probably sit down and say, you know what? I want to know if you're real, Allah. Show me yourself. And then Christ shows them, uh, Christ turn up and show him who's the real God. <laughs> <laughs> but in this case, of course, this Muslim, that's what happened. That is what happened. So God wants you to come to him open and transparent. Open up to the Father. Open up to him. He wants to hear your heart for what it is. Fully. Not to other, uh, uh, not to the faith, oh, I've just come to God, but you only come to seek the hand of God, not the faith not the face of the Lord, not the heart of the Father. He wants you to come to him transparently. Open up. Show him all the cupboards. And let me say, look, it's not going to happen overnight that you, you come to the Father because everybody tests the waters. You're not going to go out on a date, the first date, and expose yourself to the other person about everything, you you, you know, what's happening or what the, the terrible things in your life and all that kind of stuff. Now you, you come to them and you, you little by little, you kind of like, mm, you know, <laughs> let me just say this, say that, or this is what I can say, what I can't say, and so on and so forth, right? Because you want to impress. People are like that with Christ, with God. God, this is my life. This is me. But God wants us to eventually get to a point over the period of years when we just say, you know what, enough is enough. Lord, here I am. Here is all of me. I'll be the potter. Uh, sorry, I'll be the clay and you be the potter. I want you to mold me and make me. All my cracks are out there for everybody to see. All the, the, the broken chip off bit that I've been hiding and painting over is there to, uh, for everyone to see. All the things that I've been trying to uh, you know, hide away 
that it can't be seen, it's there for people to, uh, sorry, it's there for you to see. So make me perfect again. Make me usable again. Make my uh, windows, my display windows clear again, open again, so that people may see you in me through, through me. They will see you. They will be drawn to you. The Bible says that, that it's the spirit that draws men. The spirit in you that draws all men. So when, when, when you go and you go out there, and like I said to you, people watch you. People watch you. I was saying this the other day. People watch you. I think I've just I shared it on that. You know that my at work, they would call me Happy Jay, <laughs> the one who's always happy. And I'm like, sometimes I don't. How do you see I'm happy? Because sometimes I'm I'm cheesed off with you guys. Sometimes I'm not really in a good of good place or good mood. But they somehow see him all, no, they call me Smiley J. Sorry, Smiley J. Smiley J. They, that's what they see, their perception. And some people that are telling me this, I'm like, wow, okay. So you're watching me like that? But it's what, it's what they're seeing. It's what they're seeing. So that makes them have a something good to say about me. In spite of my work, my work might not be up to scratch. It might be the rubbish. It might, I might be in the bottom of the pile. But somehow they're saying good things about me. What it is that they're making them saying good things about me? What are they seeing? They're seeing something else greater in me that I'm not even aware that they're, they're looking at. It's the same with the glass front shops. When people pass there, you might be busy in the back taking out, restocking, Whatever, if you know how shop the shop runs or how shop works, if you ever work in retail, and people will just pop in. You might hear the bell goes off if there's a bell at your door. Or oh, according to Selfridges, when I was working there, people will come on the mat, and I'll be coming out the back of the stockroom thinking, "Whoa, okay, got a few people on our mat here." And there's people be drawn in. Why? Because of what they see inside, even when you're not paying attention. And that's the beautiful thing about being transparent, is that it's for all to see, everyone's eyes. That's, I mean, I think there's a part of the Bible that talks about, you know, we should uh, be careful of what we, uh, when I remember, I don't want to misquote. Um, but in a sense, we, we need to be open, transparent, because once we learn to get our skeletons out of the closet and show Christ and he deals with them, then listen, when people come up against us with our issues and say, well, ain't you the person that was, I'm just using, using this as an example, ain't you the person that was sleeping around? Ain't you the person that um, their husband left or their wife cheated on or whatever, they're using it as a shame or as embarrassment. Guess what? Because you've exposed that to the Lord, you, you've gone to the Father first and He's dealt with that issue, and he's now remade you, made you a new creation, a new creature in Christ. He's now, he's now laid a different foundation. He's dug up the old one. He's broken it up with the hammer, and he's made a new one. And whatever that the enemy is finding as a dart of your past, of whatever the shame was, you're not going to be affected by it. Why? Because you have made your peace with the Father. You have said, Father, I've made it, I've opened up myself to you, and you have cleared my closet. You've cleared uh, uh, whatever it is. You've cleared it. So now people that is looking in, people that who I know before, people will come and say, well, ain't you the one in such and such, and think that will affect me, will fail miserably. And then they will see the love of God in me, and they will come to worship the Lord thy God. <laughs> as the word of God says, let a whole man see the works, your good works, and they may come and glorify the Lord. They may come and glorify God. They may see your good works. Where your good works is, where are they seeing your good works come from? Like I said, are you doing the good works to be seen? There's a difference between doing the good works to be seen and doing the good work and being seen. 
if that confused you, let me know. <laughs> because some people are doing good works just to be not uh, just to be noticed, to be seen, to have accreditation, right? Like in I could talk about retail, people will be um, they will call them a brown tongue. <laughs> I don't want to mention what the brown tongue means, but if you understand what I mean. Uh, it means people who want to appease the boss, appease the, they only do work when the boss is around. They only pretend to do things when the boss is around. Why? So that the boss man could see that you're doing things according to he thinks you're doing it all the time. And you're doing it just for the sake of maybe a promotion, maybe to be liked. Maybe to say that, yo, I'm a good worker. I, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and all these things. But when you are doing things, as according to the person who is breaking his back in the, in the back of the store and he is coming out and he's doing what he's supposed to do day and night, day and night, day and night, and so on and so forth. And people look at your, what you're doing. You might not be seeing them, but you're not doing it for the sake of to be seen. You're not doing it for the sake of uh, trying to get something, malicious thought, like to, to get something or to, to have something done to someone. You're not doing it for the sake of that. You're doing it because of the love of your heart. And according to retail, you're doing it because of the love of retail, of the love of your job. That's why you're doing it. And then recognition comes by that, as according in God. We know sometime in the world now it doesn't work like that. It's the person who actually is trying to impress the bosses and doing the most and whatever and talking the talk and walking the walk when actually doing the job. They're the one somehow, always somehow stem to go further. Not sure why. You've muted, brother. Brother Jay, you've muted. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Sorry, guys, for that. I think my van just tried to shut me off. Uh, my van shut off these electric vans. Um, I can't remember where I was last. If you guys were listening, where was I last? Just remind me of the last thing I said so I could get on. Come on, you guys must be listening. <laughs> um, okay right so in that sense like i said that all men will see your good works and come to worship the lord come to know of the lord and like i was saying the good works is not one that you do to be recognized but the good works is the one that you do for the sake and the love of god that is in your heart that's captivated you 
that has pushed you and motivated you to actually want to just be real and love people generally. That's the good works. That's where the point of you want to come from, not the good works that you want to be able to uh, uh, to impress. Impress the boss, impress the preacher, the pastor, impress. No, not from that place. So people must be able to see God in you. See God. And seeing God in you represent what comes out. Right? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever it's in there will come out. Eventually, someone could, they can't, I don't want to use the word BS, but they can't BS you for very long. Because eventually, you'll see the true nature of that person. That person is genuine. You'll see the genuine, the genuinity of that person. You see how real they are, according to if they let their yay be yay and they no be no. Yes be yes, no be no. Being clear, being transparent, being open, being open. And you, you could only do that when you have totally be open first to God. When you totally open yourself first to God, that's the way that you'll be able to say, look, um, you won't tell, as they would call it, a white, a, a white lie or black lie, whatever it is. You won't be telling those lies. You'll be straight up. You'll be straight up. So in that sense, I was using the, the analogy of uh, the shop. And I was talking about, I'm just recapping there, using the analogy about the shop, of how we need to be like a shop front. Because shop back in the days, there used to be a lot of, like I said, from, from the 1800 coming up to uh, 2024, um, shops as dramatically changed. Shops before used to be, like I said, brick fronts until obviously they had glass being put in and realized it has a clearer effect of display of goods and attracting people. I, even on Saturday, I talk about the bakery, how they have the glass fronts, but they also have the window on the side that they open so that the, the smell of the, ba of the baking of bread or the baking of the cake could go out, the aroma goes out and hits you in the nose and then you've been pulled to this place and then you go inside and you, you end up buying half the shop um, because you were hungry. Because you were hungry on that day and stuff like that. Okay, so thank you. Um, so, so there's different, so there's, there was different strategy uh, of how people use window fronts to display goods so that people may be attracted and drawn inside. And majority of the times, uh, loads of people would say that they go window shopping, you know, they window shop, they go and they look at the stuff that is in there, in the back of their mind, they're making plans to buy whatever. Maybe if they see something they like or whatever, some people just pass just to look at the great things in there. But inside, they're wishing and hoping that they can buy it uh, one day that they will buy it or whatever those window shop leads you to um, at that particular moment of time. But the point I'm trying to make is that you see what's in the shop. You see clearly what's in the shop. Now, when you go, uh, when now you get to the point of going into the shop, when people are drawn in, when they see what they see inside must be as in according to I'm talking about people now what what when people come into you because they're drawn to you now what is inside that they see that they've been drawn to must be real can't be a knockoff like when you get to <laughs> I can't remember where we went uh in the missus and uh you know they they had fake products there you know fake um Gucci's and fake Pradas and whatever you know you see these things and it they tell you the price and you think oh my god like whatever you know you get sucked into that but when you go into the shop everything must be genuine in you in your life Every, yeah counterfeit thank you keep everything inside of you must must not be a counterfeit it must be real so when people are being attracted through your window and they look through uh, the wind your display who they see on the outside, Junior, what they see and now, how Junior sound now, what Junior is teaching, what he is saying. He must be able to represent that when I go into his shop. 
So what am I mean by that? I'm here ministering to you. And if I can't back that up by when you say, well, Junior, you said this. And you come to me, maybe not saying, Junior, you said this, but just come in and say, well, come in and I don't know, say, Junior, you said I could ask for help and I need help on this, such and such. Right. Am I what am I going to say now? This is what the display shows. So when you come in, this is what it needs to be. Because a lot of preachers and teachers and prophets and all these people, sometimes they're just for show. They just do as uh, basically do as I say, not what as I do. What I display on the outside is not the same as the inside. What was that guy that um, the documentary was about the other day? Um, uh, TB something. TB Joshua. I think that's it. TB Joshua. Right? People see a different display on the outside that causing to uh, telev televise evangelism. What they see, people are flocking there, going to Africa and all these kind of stuff and blah, blah, blah. And they go in there. But not knowing that the display that they saw on the outside was a counterfeit. is not the same as what they got when they get there. When they went into the shop. They went into the shop. And they went in. Because when, when people come to you, they want to see Christ. They want to see God. Maybe they didn't come with that intention at the first place. But guess what? When they come in, they must meet Christ. Because Christ is the owner of the shop. Could you imagine if you go into, I don't know, let's name a big, uh, Selfridges. I used to work in Selfridges. Or maybe uh, Harrods. And you go in there to shop and you buy something and you go to the counter. And you somehow you meet the actual owner serving you. You're meeting the actual owner of this actual super mall complex, whatever you want to call it, shop. As in, according to the big store, you're thinking, never in a million years you probably would think you'll meet the owner. You imagine going into that, that day and actually meet the owner, having conversation, building a relationship, and think about it. How great and privileged you would feel to be able to meet the owner of this great shop. You would feel amazing. That's how people want to feel when they come into your shop. When they come into your store. When they come into your space. When they've been attracted by something and they come in. They want to feel, thank you, keep privileged. They want to feel privileged. They want to feel honored. They, they want to feel like they're meeting the, the, the true authentic person, the, the true authentic junior. But when they come in, they should meet Christ because Christ is the display that you show. On the, when people are walking on the outside, they're seeing the attraction of your good works. They're seeing the attraction of your smile. They're seeing the attraction of a changed life. They're seeing the attraction of this can't be the same person. They're, they're seeing the attraction of, of how, where you came from to where you are now, there's a difference in your life. They're seeing the attraction of how you set yourself up to be as a man or woman of God. And they will come in and say, what makes you so different? Because I'm looking on the outside of your shop and your display looks so amazing. Your merchandise seems so wonderful. So I want to know what makes you the way you are. And because of that, they're attracted to that. They come in. And when they come in by the glory of God at all times, they should meet Christ. Because Christ is the one that is he's, he's the merchandiser of your window. You're not the merchandiser, sorry to say, to burst your bubble. You're not the merchandiser, but Christ is. He's the one that set up the shop. Guess what? You're just the shop floor worker in your own body. That's how it should be. You're the shop floor worker in your own body. Why? Because you turn over your life to God. You turn over your uh, the whole entire being to God. You're giving yourself over to Christ. 
Let me die and let Christ live. Is that what Paul is saying these things? That listen, I will decrease for Christ to increase. You take over my shop, Lord. Because if I am in control of my shop, I can't organize it properly. My displays are all over the place. My windows are not clean. You know, uh, people are not going to be attracted because of whatever or nobody's coming. Let God lead. Let him take over your shop. Let him buy you out. So that he makes the display. He makes the decisions. He, he does all the things, whatever. And then you come in. And once they come in the shop and be introduced to you, the sale associate, the person who's just on the shop floor, then you could say, here is the owner. Meet the king. Meet the Lord. Let him let 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 God be represented in you, be in you, because you are the vessel. You are a vessel for the, a vessel of honor for the Lord. You are a, a temple, I should say, a temple of God that God wants to indwell. So when people come into this temple, they need to see uh, they need to see Christ. They need to see God. So that transparency is very important, especially to Christianity. It's very important. Let your yes be yes and your nay be nay or your no be no. Don't make an oath that you cannot keep. Don't tell, make a promise to someone that you cannot keep. And I'm not going on the basis of making promises that you cannot keep and so on and so forth. That's not what I'm going on. I'm going on the fact that you're being open to say that I can do something, I can't do something. This is the way I am. This is who I am. And yes, sorry, maybe you've met a bad side of me. I Forgive me, I've changed. Or I'm trying to change. Be open. People like vulnerability. If you, for some reason, like the, like Christ says, you know, ask, uh, forgive one another. Forgive one another. Whatever I've done to you, my brother, my sister, forgive me. You go to your enemy and you say this. It softens their heart, even though they're rejoicing, saying, uh-huh, I knew you would come. I knew you would, you, you would come back and you will fall first and you will say sorry. But guess what? They cannot de deny the fact that you have come and made things right. There's nothing else for the devil to accuse you with. Your window and display is clear. There's no dirt on your window. There's no sign. People could see what is inside and they will come and they meet Christ. The devil cannot use anything to destroy you anymore. But us as humans... Sometimes it's hard and it's difficult because we too much care what people say instead of caring what God says about us. And we put up, <laughs> we put up, all, I, I, okay, so there was a shop called Duchamp. I don't know if you know Duchamp, but it, it was a uh, French brand, right? Um, it was making headways for a while, catwalks and everything and whatever. And all of a sudden, it just dies out. Now, one of the things that I heard that makes it go bust um, is, is that one of their shop, they spent so much money on the shop in Oxford Street. And the shop display was horrendous. The shop itself was designed very badly. It was very dark. If you look at the brand, the brand Duchamp, it's a, it's a very, it's got a lot of flowery kind of stuff on it. And it's quite nice. I liked it. Um, in a sense, you know, the, the clothes was quite nice, you know, well tailored and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, back then I was a man who likes to wear his, you know, whether not suits, but I like to wear the semi cash, you know, I'll be uh, casual smart, right? So I like these kind of blazers and shirt and all that. My wife used to say, so say to me all the time, why do you have to wear a shirt even to the park? You go to the park and you're in a shirt, why? <laughs> Can you not wear a t shirt? Can you not just wear a jumper? Why do you, why do you have to wear a shirt? Yeah, you know, I was a man who likes to look nice going wherever, right? <laughs> anyway, that's just my <laughs> my own. But this shop in particular, they spent so much money on this shop. And obviously they expect a return because of how the brand was going. 
you know, that it was all over. In, uh, it was in Harrods. It was in uh, 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 Selfridges. It was in all the major uh, um, shops across uh, the world and so on and so forth. But in that regards, the, the way how someone designed their shops or the way how the owner wanted the shop to be designed, it was poorly designed. So everything was darked out, including the display at the front. You can't really see anything. So basically, if you don't see the name outside saying Dusham, you won't go in. You go in and the shop is dark. Is that when I say dark, it's like you have a few lights and you have to struggle to see what is actually displayed or what you're looking at because that's the that's the surrounding of their brand. And guess what? No people that never go in there and shop. People never go in there and shop, and that really rips them apart, I think, with their stores across uh uh the world. I guess they will have a, a second thing coming to think about. But the point I bring that up is that sometimes this is how we can get when we start to make what other people think of us put it first and rather than what God thinks of us. When we when we had come to God and say, God, I'm laying it all out on the, uh, you know, I'm making it plain, I'm making it clear, I'm making it um, uh, transparent to you. But then someone come up in the end, the devil comes with his agents and he makes you feel guilty, makes you feel bad about past life, past sins, past whatever, and stuff like that. And then your shop get dark. Your mirrors, your uh, display gets so dark that, you know, uh, that people can't really see Christ in it. They Even though they, they come in, they see your face, your beautiful face, and they see the smile, they come in, and they can't find God. They can't find anything. So they walk out again and never to return or never has an encounter and experience with Christ through your life. Why? Because what you're displaying is not God, what God wants you to display in that shop because you're still the manager of the shop. <laughs> you're still the owner of the shop and not making things very clear, plain, open for people to see for people to see the bible says in habakkuk 2 2 it says write the vision down write what you've heard write it down make it plain make it clear that people that they could see they could read it they could look at it but they could also what take it and run with it so in this respect god could entrust me with the shop to run i'm just using this as an analogy God could entrust me with the shop to run it. Which means that he will say, here's the manual of how to do it. Now, it's for me to actually have that manual, to read it, to understand it, and try to understand it as the, with the same passion as uh, uh, the boss. So that I'll be running it with the same passion. Any company you go to, any company you go to, they always want you to uh, uh, to understand their mandates, understand their vision. Even in churches, they want you to understand all of this. Why? They want you to be able to understand it so you could run with it as according to the same passion as the leader, the same passion as the person who opens it. Because once you do that, once you start to open up yourself to the same passion or you see it the same way as the person who owns the shop, you will run the shop like it's your own. You will run the business like it's your own. You will take responsibility like it's your own. And the business will work and be successful because you treat it that way. So when God entrusts it to us, write the vision down, make it plain and clear that others could take, up, take it up and run with it. They need to come in and see the reflection of Christ even when no one's looking. <laughs> they need to see the reflection let me say that again they need to see the reflection of Christ even when the boss is not in the shop they should say this shop is well run it's well organized it's well and the, when, when God comes back he says well done my good and faithful servant for you have done exactly what I've left for you to do with the same passion with the same heart and quickly, I'll go over this before I finish and we could pray because obviously time is quickly eroding away. Um, is that 
so we have the analogy of the shop, which I said to you, I'm using it as, see it as yourself. You, as the shop, God, God, God as the owner of the shop, the general overseer. He's the man. He's the manager. He's the CEO. You gave it, you write it in the will and you say, Lord, I hand over back to you. You are the shop. God wants to use your display. He wants to turn the front of the house. He wants to turn the front of the shop that which was building blocks. He wants to remove those building blocks and he wants to turn it into a, 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 um, a glass display. He wants to remove your fears. He wants to remove your troubles. He wants to remove your shame, your hate. All these things, he wants to remove those building blocks from the outside. Like I said to you um, uh, uh, before, in the 1800s, shop used to be, I wish I could have some display to show you on the screen. Shops used to be, um, uh, before, it was all blocked, blocked out. You know, maybe wooden doors until they have bricks. And bricks comes and they, they have this until they realize if we have a glass front, people could see what's in my shop. And that made so much of a great impact that even down to today, great places as Selfridges and Harrods and every other stores follow after, follow suit, that having a glass front is maximizing on profit, maximizing on the foot, uh, um, the, the, the footfall to come into the store. It maximizes on it. Absolutely max. It, it changes things, changes, it dynamically changes things. But we need to represent that shop and God be the boss man. God be the one who designs that shop. And when he's not in the shop, he wants us to be able to take up the vision. When he gives it to us, run with it. And even the fact that we could leave the manual that other people could actually take this up because when they come into your shop and they say, this is such a great place to work because I love the display. I love the things that I'm seeing so much. And they come to know Christ. They come to know God and they want to know more about the company. They say, I want to work here. When they do happen to work here, they will take up a manual and they will say, I want to know exactly everything all about this shop. And you, you can see how it replicates into discipleship, disciple, 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 disciple. And then you will have uh, people come unto God because of the good works that they've seen or the God work, should I say, that they've seen through you, that you have displayed in your shop, that you have shown them that you're a hard worker, that your yes is yes and your no be no. What you see is what you get. What is in the shop that is genuine is not counterfeit. I am who God make me to be. I am that I am because God has made me who I am. And we will stand firm on that and be firm on that. So when you go out today, when you go out to work, when you go out to wherever you're going, you're walking on the streets, driving down the road, Lord help me <laughs> that I don't display a different characteristics when I'm driving. Because Sometimes I could get heated when I see silly things, but help me, Father. Um, that when, when, when we are going down the road, when we are walking out, whatever it is, help us to be genuine. Help us to, for things that people are seeing, that they will see you and it's genuine. It's not fake. It's genuine. And if they've been attracted to come and to, to inquire, that they will meet you. They will meet you, the standards of you. They will meet you. And Father, they will people will see the good works and they will come on and to glorify the name of the Lord. And quickly on the last one is, as, as I said to you, mention about houses that I've been into that from the outside are parents. It looks like every, any other, but then you go in and you're like, wow, my God. You see, sometimes these, because obviously, like I said, there's you know, two different places. Uh, two different people the kind of people and one of them sometimes may be people who doesn't display that outside but on the inside it, you know you have people like the introverts they will say that the introverts um that they have this love when you if you ever met an introvert they're very you know quiet to themselves whatever 
But once you get to know them, as in they let you in, what, like someone opening the front door, once you get to know them, you're thinking, wow, <laughs> this person is not shy. This person is not this. This person is not that. They're amazing, you know. But sometimes the introverts themselves want to be like the shop fronts. But maybe sometimes they cannot be. That doesn't mean that they have not got a great display on the inside. That doesn't mean that they haven't got a, a great personality on the inside from what you're seeing. Because sometimes your resting face, you know, your face might not be very... uh. <laughs> very welcoming until people actually meet you and you're thinking wow what I actually thought wasn't what I'm seeing you know it's great so you got different type of people and most people would would want to be like the shop fronts but most people let's just say we can't be all shop fronts sometimes but that's how we're supposed to be I'm not saying we're not striving for that but people are people but you have those people so those people who are have the houses that is built up with brick looks like everything else outside. And sometimes we need that subtleness about us until people come in, but we need to be open, transparent. So people could be attracted to something, attracted to it, to come into, let the Holy spirit use it as a way to draw all men onto him, draw all men onto him. Let your display display in your windows Let the Lord designed it. Let the Lord fashion it in what he wants to do but remember as i said at the first beginning it first start with you being transparent in the private in private coming to god first being open because god sees all things he knows all things there's nothing you could hide from him so um i'll stop there because i know uh time has gone and i want you to be able to pray and if you have uh things that you want to add or or, or ask questions or pray into, uh, we'll get the time for that. Um, so one of the prayer points I want us to pray um, this morning um, is the Lord will help us to, like the first part I've said, help us to come to him first. And I want to use the anchor, um, the anchor scripture that always holds me. Uh, it's Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all, sorry, and righteousness and all other things shall be added. I want us to use that as an anchor to pray into, say, Lord, look, if I have not been transparent, if there's any area in my life that is covered, that I have not shown you, that I have not given to you because of shame, because of guilt or whatever, Lord, open me up. In fact, I open up here now. I've opened up my path to you. You don't have to unmute for this prayer. Because obviously you you know what the, what is in your life that you might be hiding away from God or you know God knows but you're still not bringing it to God. You know here's the time uh, to do that. Father, thank you. I thank you for this time, this moment, and I thank you, Father Lord, for your word today. I thank you for how you used me in that sense to as my display so that people may hear this word. I pray, Father, as I even gave my own, my own testimony and asking for forgiveness of how I said what I said to my brother and did not turn up. I pray for forgiveness for all of us. That, Father, as we come to you first, as we make that first point of contact, that first point of meeting, which is to come to you first. But once we come to you, Father, help us in the integrity in our private place to open up all doors, all closets, all ceilings, all trap doors, everything that in the basement, help us to open up all the rooms to you. So that all that the skeletons, all that the things in our past, all for everything that Father Lord seen that needs to be cleaned out, cleared out, to be mentioned to you, that people won't come in and see a dirty mirror, a, a dirty mirror or dirty display or whatever that it will be clean and ready that there will be different things in the shop you renew it renew what's in the shop re-ramp it in fact before we open the shop re-ramp our lives before we open to the public re-ramp it lord take out what not needs to be taken out refresh what needs to be refreshed restore make new bring new items new merchandise, things that, Father Lord, that you know 
Take over the shop, Father, our lives. We come to you, Lord, before we open to the public. And we're asking you, Father, Lord, to create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. For your word says, who shall ascend unto the holy hills of the Lord? If not, he with a clean hands and pure heart. So, Father, these scriptures I quote, let them be a, an arrow in the hearts and the lives of your people this morning, that they will be open, transparent. And no, Father, help us to understand the power. I didn't even get a chance to talk about the, the power of being transparent. But Father, I guess that's for another time. But the power of being transparent. Father, that people may come see, see you, know you, and to receive salvation. So Father, help us at the first uh, point of our, uh, of our prayer is to come to you. First protocol point is to come and open ourselves to you. Be transparent so that you may help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The second prayer point um, for me is that when the Lord has entrusted us with a shop, when the Lord has entrusted us with the place, us, ourselves, to, dis to have the displays going, that we will maintain it, that we will read his word as the vision, that, that, like, like I mentioned about Habakkuk, Habakkuk 2, 2, the manual, that we will read it, we will digest it, and the passion will become ours. That we will keep the shop clean. We will keep it in good health, in good stead. We will treat it as our own, and let the and and obviously um, allow the Lord to be reflected in us at all time, even when He's not there. So, Father, I pray this prayer, and I pray for my brothers, my sisters across the world, not just here, but using us as a point of contact. That Father, Lord, that so it shall be. That your, we will seek your heart, not just your hand. We will know what you, uh, we will understand, understand. <laughs> as Father Lord, as you said, in all your getting, get understanding. That Father Lord, you give us wisdom, but in all your getting, get understanding. Right? We pray for the understanding of your heart. That we will have the same passion once we read your word. And we will treat this temple, this shop, in the way that you wanted us to, uh, to, to treat it. You want us to display it. How you've left it to be displayed. How it was in the beginning, before sin, where Adam has displayed a great nature of God. Hallelujah. Thank you for the revelation. Where Adam has displayed a great nature of God. But Father Lord, we're praying that we'll be effective when we when we understand. In fact, I don't think we have a choice to be effective because if we understand your heart, we will be effective. So Father, I pray for the demonstration, for the power of God, according to the clarity of the vision of the word that you've given in the hearts, that we, our shop, may be displaying with clean windows, restored products, merchandise that Father Lord you have placed in display, and people may come in and find you with integral, integrity. I pray for integrity over your people, integrity in spirituality, integrity in their workplaces, integrity, Father Lord, where they go in their relationship, integrity in their homes. Inte Father, let me not be a husband. To my wife, Voke. Let me not be a husband and say that I'm a good husband. Not Let me not, Father Lord, pretend out there that I'm a good husband. But when I'm at home, Father, my life is erect. My marriage is, is on the Rockies. That, that My wife don't feel that I'm a good father. Let the display that's shown outside be. I pray for my brothers and sisters that integrity will be integral in our lives in the name of Jesus. Wherever, whatever, at every time, every turn. That, Father, your word will be yea and amen according to your promises for our lives. We pray this, Father, in every churches, in every leaders, every as a point of contact for Pastor Chris, 
and our, and our mommy grace that father lord whatever that is displayed is what father is inward that is yet made outward that what out of the abundance father of the heart the mouth speaks father whatever is inside father has been displayed and they will come and find you father i pray in the name of jesus that they will be true to the people of god they will speak in truth be an oracle be the uh, do the right thing not just be a hearer of the word not just to say what they say but they will do as well that father the the leaders across the world i pray for my own uh, uh, uh pastor father lord uh, uh, um, pastor akin and his wife the same in ep father lord and every other ministry that is on this platform that we represent for their leaders the leaders across the world in china father that is the, the been prosecution in pakistan for our brother adam hallelujah in all the works the leadership there father in the name of jesus the iraqi christians Father, the African Christians, Father, who's been persecuted by Boko Haram, Father, Lord, integral. I pray for integrity. I pray, Father, Lord, that they'll be integral to the end, to the bitter end. Hallelujah. Father, your word says, Lord, if yet we deny you in front of man, because our windows have now been contaminated, our windows of the shop front has been blocked up. Hallelujah. If we deny you before man, you will deny us before your father, before the father. Father, help us to be integral in all walks of life, even when the eyes are not on us. Help us to be integral that we may walk in light and our shop front will be filled with light that people be attracted they may come in because of the spirit of God that draws all man onto you. So, Father, I leave this platform in your hands. And I thank you for the people who has listened and for the hearts that is here, that is touched. And I pray, Father, Lord, that you will increase upon us all. That we know that, Father, it takes time to break down some walls. But we know eventually those walls will go. So help us, Father, Lord, not to stop you at your word every so often but let you totally demolish those walls of shame demolish those walls of hate in jesus name and the third prayer point uh, uh before i hand over to, to keith i could see signs up is that we that we pray that god will uh give us a helmet well not a helmet sorry. Let, let's just say that yeah the helmet of salvation but also to protect our minds from the negative voices from the neg negative viewpoints um, and, and to protect us from the reoccurrence of the shame and guilt that is uh, was in our previous life that the Lord now has made us new. For the Bible tells us that he's in Christ, he's a new creature, uh, creation, he's a new creation. And therefore now there is no what condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk it not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So let us quickly, quickly pray before I turn it over. Father, I thank you. And I praise you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you know us and our intentions. Sometimes, Lord, I know we are trying to get there, but things are holding us back. Shame, guilt, whatever. Even though we are bringing it up to you many, 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 many times before, we know that we are bringing it up. But somehow it has a hold of our lives and it holds us bound. I pray for a release in the name of Jesus. I pray for a breaking in the name of Yahweh. I pray that, Father Lord, your word will sever, cut, release, loose the bonds and the holes and the, the, the straggling of the enemy and the, the hooks in our flesh. We pray that they will be taken out and destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. That from today, from now on, we will walk with our heads held high. We will walk in integrity. We will walk in honesty. We will walk in transparency. That Father Lord, knowing that you have set us free for whom you, the Son, Christ Jesus, the Lord, hallelujah, has set free, is free indeed. I declare that I'm free. You guys need to make declaration this morning. I declare that I'm free from all, all guilt, all shame all persecution i am free from all my past mistakes i am free for whom the lord has set free I surely has set free indeed 
And Father, you have surely set us free. You surely set me free. Thank you for liberty. Thank you for freedom. Thank you for libertizing this platform, representing other ministries. I pray for a release of the other ministries as well, that they may serve you in good faith, in good tithing, and they may be transparent one to another, confessing their sins one to another. For you said you will forgive us. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord. Help our own beliefs. Sometimes it becomes very hard, difficult, tough for us to do. But you know, Father, we are still in flesh. And like Paul says, there is still a fight. There's still a fight against the spirit and the flesh. There's still a fight. But Father, we surrender. And we say, Father, allow us to decrease that you may increase. That all our worries and cares may be taken away from us. All our shames will be taken away. All our past lives will be taken away. And we are now made a new creation and a new creature in Christ Jesus. From now on going forward, showing the world what is in the shop. Showing the world what the good characteristics of the person, of us, the people. Showing what you have built in us as the good part of us that you have built. The heart that you give us for each other. Father, we pray we display this that people may come and find you in Jesus' most victorious and comforting name. Amen and amen. Bless you guys. Um, thank you for listening. Hope you were blessed uh, by what is being said. And I pray that the word will minister to your heart and it will take you to another level in your walk with Christ and demonstrating the love of God and uh, the fellowship of what, uh, it sounds like I'm quoting that, uh, <laughs> the fellowship as well. Um, that you may go forward and be a true representative um, of God. Like God has given us the vision, Habakkuk 2.2, 2, has given us the vision through the word of uh, that you're reading today through the Bible. And write, um, uh, believe in it, trust in it, walk with it, and guarantee you, you will hear the heart of God, you'll know the heart of God for yourself, and God may show up. And uh, hopefully one day, by the grace of God, he will say, well done, my good and faithful servant, for running that shop that I've allowed you uh, or, or, or put it into your, and trust in your hand you've done well with those talents so bless you thank you this morning bless you um, Pastor Chris thank good to you see you <laughs> Amen you. Thank you. Hallelujah praise be to God thank you thank you Junior um, for sharing devotion this morning it's uh, it's wonderful you uh, it's been challenging um, listening to you and uh, you know so many poignant um um things that you've said um that uh, only should cause us to seek god more and to be christ-like in every respect and uh, one of the things i would say is this is that um you know oftentimes we will look at ourselves and feel condemned because we're not all what the scripture says we should be and uh, I want you to understand is that it is the devil that is an accuser of the brethren. It is the devil. The devil hates saints. He hates believers. And he will do everything to bring us down. In other words, to discourage us, to feel like we are not fit for duty. And uh, you know, when... I, it just just came to me when a person um, signs up to be a soldier. It's not that they're going to be commander or Arnold Schwarzenegger and be able to do everything, but what they are committed to do. Even as you think about Israel and uh, the people that have joined up to be a part of um, to the army, so to speak, over there. They, they look like ordinary people. These were people that were going about their everyday life. And yet, when, they, when it came to the core, they were made themselves immediately available. In other words, they availed themselves to be used so that they could defend their nation. And it's not that they're going to be perfect in everything, but one thing they do, they have the heart, the right heart attitude to say, you know what? 
I'm going to honor my God and I'm going to honor my country, whatever the case might be, but I'm going to fight to defend the liberty of my people, our people. And I believe that's the same attitude that we should have. We, should, we shouldn't think that we're everything, but you know what? If we have the right heart towards God, then it's God by his grace and his favor and his loving kindness and his mercies that enable us to position ourselves in a, in a sense of being victorious. So we have an attitude that we're victorious in Christ and we don't feel condemned or feel like we are not in a position to do what everything that God calls us to do. And so the scripture that comes to mind immediately is that it says where it says, um, there is now no condemnation to them that in Christ Jesus, who walks not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And uh, so it's your heart attitude that is important. But what we do, we position ourselves in Christ, knowing that he's our savior, he's our deliverer, he's our healer, he's our restorer, he's everything. So we, we know of a truth that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And we are a new species of being in Christ. I need to emphasize that. And uh, Junior, you gave so much um, different analogies of being transparent and everything. I, I believe that there are many of you that all you want to do is do good and be good and express the love of God. But as Junior um, gave an example, and he said that, you know, he wanted, uh, there was a brother that invited him to, um, whether it is a show, opening show or whatever but his heart said i want to support you but his obligations that he knew that he had before and said that you cannot be there but you um you cannot be there but yet you're saying you want to be in two places at once in other words he knew deep down in his heart that he couldn't deliver and so he promised the brother that he will make it or try and make it and everything knowing that the chances are that he would make it, it was very slim because <laughs> i'm not saying anything but uh, his dear wife said we are going to be and uh, and so he had to conform accordingly now the thing is is this the honesty in junior or the spirit of god in junior said that you know what i should have just told him the truth that I could not be there. I, in all honesty, he really felt that he could not be there. And he should have said, I would have loved to have come, but you know what, there's no, uh, there's no possibility of me making it on this occasion, whatever the case might be. But he said, yes. He didn't say yes because he, he didn't say yes because he wanted to let down the brother. He said yes because he wanted to appease the brother or make uh, lend support to it but in effect what it was it's more disappointing for the brother that he didn't turn up it would have been more disappointing and so he invariably knew that he had to repent of that or just say sorry i shouldn't have done it. and so he referred to the scriptures that says let your yes be yes and your no be no and i i, I and i adhere to that and why I'm talking like this, because as a pastor, you, you know, uh, you, you are proposition or you, you get calls every minute of the, well, every minute, every day you'll get calls. I get calls anyway from different people. And uh, what, what it is you want to be and you want to be there for everybody. But you know, you can only physically be in one place at one time. And I have to, in many cases, say I can't make it because I have commitments in, the, in certain areas. And there's other times I say, yes, I can do it because I believe that there's that window of opportunity where I can avail myself to help or assist in a particular way. Uh, whether it be to my brother or sister or even to a stranger, whatever the case. But sometimes 
it doesn't work out. And, uh, and sometimes, um, invariably, you can be judged wrongly because you never turned up rather than judged on the basis of, oh, you know something, something could have happened that would have not enabled him to turn up. Whereas, and in many cases, it is because there is something that comes up and you think, you know what, <laughs> this is an emergency. And in that, in that moment, you're doing things because it's an emergency, it is of importance and sometimes even a life and death situation. And so one of the things I would say is that where you know where it's yes, say yes, and where you know it's no, say no, and where you didn't follow through, just apologize and say, I'm sorry, I may have let you down or whatever, I'm sorry. And I just wanna say publicly on this platform, I love every single one of you. And if it is that I've let you down in any way, any way or disappointed you or not followed through with something, I do honestly from my heart apologize because I would love to be there for every one of you. And you know what? I've had a situation this morning where um, someone's turned up at my house probably four o'clock in the morning and I've and Grace and I have been dealing with that situation and we've had to take that person in and deal with that situation. You think, God, you know, uh, that's why we wasn't able to come on the platform this morning. And so the reality is this, Jesus Christ was only, he could only be in one place at one time. And even there's many times when people pursued him and said, can you come? Whether it's see my daughter, see my servant, whatever the case might be. Jesus at times had to delay because he was dealing with another situation. But his heart intent was always to meet the persons at the point of their need. I pray that I can get to a point where I can just say, even if I can't make it, I can say in the name of Jesus and that situation is um, addressed wherever that person's problem, whatever that person's problem is. And I believe for that. But until such time, there are limitations in terms of what we're all able to do. And I think at the end of the day, what it is, you can only present yourself in Christ and say, what if I, you can't do it, say, I will pray for you or I'll address it at a later date or whatever the case might be. And I'm just gonna say public, please forgive me if you felt that I did not carry through with my intentions. And uh, I just wanna read this scripture because, I just wanna read this scripture because um, Junior said a lot of things and it really provoked me. It really provoked me. It's uh, Romans 12 and it's verse nine. And it says this, love, let your love or let love be sincere and an active, the real thing without guile and hypocrisy. Notice the word says without guile and hypocrisy. So, because some people, they love, but it's not sincere. There is, there's a hidden agenda in it. There's something that they want for themselves or something they want to derive on a personal level, or they say things just to make themselves look good or, or they love in a, in a sense that they want to be loved back. That's not the God kind of love. But it says, without guile and hypocrisy, hate what is evil. This is all in the same context. Hate what is evil, evil. Detest all ungodliness and do not tolerate wickedness. 
hold on tightly to that which is good, good, or in other words, God, hold on tightly to it. And Junior made reference to a scripture that says, um, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And I always interpret that as God's works because we can do good works without it being in love because there's a hidden agenda. We want something, you see. And uh, it says, be devoted to one another with authentic brotherly affection as members of one family. Give preference to one another in honor. Never lagging behind in diligence, a glowing spirit, enthusiastic, enthusiastically serving the Lord. Constantly rejoicing in hope because of our confidence in Christ, steadfast and patience in distress, devoted to prayer and continually seeking wisdom, guidance and strength. And I'm just going to leave it at that and just say thank you again, Junior. Bless you. And uh, thank you for your prayers as well. Um, and I, I really thank God for this platform because this is an opportunity for each and every one of you to express yourself. You're not going to, certainly you never ever, you're going to be judged by Grace or myself. We all have different opinions. We all see things from a different perspective. And I honor that. I'm not here to... Um, give you a homiletic, biblical homiletics or anything like that. There's a lot of things that I know that I, I don't share. But the most important thing is that we come to a point where we can teach one another and we can hear, we can hear, not only hear, but listen. We, we, uh, we are active in taking action then of what we've received into our hearts, in our, into our spirit. And we do it. Be here as a be not hearers of the word only, but doers. So the, I expect and I believe that this sh change should be manifested in each and every one of you. And that is my desire that each and every one of you, you grow up in Christ. You be all that God has created you to be, that you fulfill your God-given call and purpose on your life. And that you be a true witness, a true witness, not just a witness, because people are witnesses, but they're not true in their witnessing. Because, as I said, there is something that they want for themselves. And uh, as Junior said, um, just by the titling, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his righteousness. Not your righteousness, because your righteousness can only be seen as a filthy rags, because you can never present yourself as holy before God, except God himself present you. And uh, just be blessed and love one another. Be sincere. Be transparent. Be transparent and know that we are only who we are because of the grace of God. But for the grace of God, where would we be? And so we should submit one to another as believers that are led by the Spirit of God and not by our flesh or our emotion. So bless you. Um, I'm just going to hand over to Keith. Go ahead, Keith. You. You got your hands up. Go ahead. Blessed morning, uh, brethren, and thank you, Junior. Um, it was quite interesting because I was making notes on what occurred to me on Saturday. And um, quick synopsis for those who don't know: I had surgery on Tuesday, uh, on Tuesday, week gone, spinal uh, cluster, nerve cluster surgery, and they released me. Uh, wrongfully had to go back in because of excruciating pain um but i made a promise i said lord i am desiring to go to this event on saturday and lord you know make a way make it possible make it feasible i even prayed about it i put it in a a vow that i'm going to attend so people there were like oh brother you know i'll see you saturday 
I didn't realize how I put myself in that place, according to the scripture that you shared. Be very careful. In fact, it's better not to. But by the grace of God, I got there, not knowing that God had an encounter for me. That was a major change for me. Now, I'm leaving that a little bit vague on purpose, because while I was there, I was like, Lord, you know, I need to be more Jesus like. So, Lord, I'm going to do my best endeavor. So I literally I literally made a vow before the Lord. And I said, Lord, I'm going to be more like Jesus, but not in the, you know, what would Jesus do only? And so much more illustrations kind of came out of it. I need to be able to um, to talk like Jesus would, even breathe like Jesus would. You think, it like, when you get in a huff, what do you do? You get off. <laughs> I need to be calm, sedate, passive. So I started to realize there's so many different things that we can be. Every attribute that we display that is not like Jesus. I said, Lord, I'm going to do everything I can. Not just my best. I will do the be more like you. So I made a vow unto him hours later. I'm at home. Pain was 10 times better. I mean, 10 times better because of what happened at the event. And I came home greeted my dog I greeted her she put her arms around my neck and basically gave me a hug and I was like oh wow lord look at this amazing like I can bend down and greet her got up with no pain well not as much pain still got the scar these stitches and stuff and I was kind of reviewing my notes in the 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 church event and kind of was like really proud and I, I, I totally skipped the part where I wrote down that you made a vow to the lord I literally recorded it in notes and hours later I got I got to sleep about 2 20 last time I looked at my clock before I closed my eyes was about 2 21 a.m so hours later after I got home from the event I <laughs> I my dog basically got up to go to the toilet she rang the bell so I had to kind of move edge out of my bed walk all the way around got into the bed out of the bed answered the door she went outside moments later came back in thought nothing of it then i noticed that she was kind of acting really funny but okay i'm gonna go back to bed wait wait go to your crate because it was raining don't drop on my bed because there'll be mud all over the place probably 10 20 minutes later here comes anger coming in again. Reiko's panting now. She only does that when something is wrong. Then she starts to half whine. So it's like, mm, mm, mm. like it's very subtle, but it's annoying and it can gravitate. And then it grows and then it grows. And because she's panting in between all of this, it's like something is wrong. So, okay, Reiko, let's go to the toilet again. I'm trying my best to be as calm as possible, as calm as feasible. And she went back to the back door and I didn't check outside. But uh, she came back in within seconds. I thought, okay, maybe it's not that she needs to go toilet. So I told her to go to a crate. I laid back into my bed. I'll say probably 409 now. Um, same sound. Now she's panting. Now she's proper whimpering. And this is an alert to me that you know, I need to go toilet. If I don't go toilet, something bad is going to happen. At first, I thought it was a fart. To be real with you, not to be graphic, she went toilet in her bed. I got up and I was livid. I can't lie to you. I wasn't breathing calmly. I wasn't thinking calmly. And then literally, Keith, the vow that you made, that I'm, even though I'm at home and I'm not in front of people, Keith, that vow that you made, oof, it was such a, yeah, I, I, the tears started to cry and I'm like, sorry, Lord. So, so sorry, Lord. Like you got to be very conscious because what you practice in behind closed doors is how you're going to practice when you're outside. And I was like, wow, Lord, uh, this this teaching and this this imprint that was on me that I've got to be very careful on and very cautious on, like Junior expressed. So I just got the gloves. 
And I just started to speak to myself. So, you know, like when we say you've got to be more like Jesus, got to think more like Jesus, have the mind of Jesus. And you have the scriptures that back all of these up as well. I started to add on extra ones. I need to be calm like Jesus. I need to have this attribute, this representation of Jesus only. I need to also display like Jesus. I'm saying this inside my home. I need to even display to my dog that even though I'm livid, I'm frustrated, I can't believe this. I should have went out and checked. Because my dog is one of these dogs that she's like me. If you are wet, there's no point moaning or, or complaining about being wet. Just deal with whatever it is that you're outside for. But it's the process of getting wet. Neither of us like. So she's like me or I'm like her. I can't work it out. We're so We're so bonded in that kind of way with, with that intrinsic. I should have checked because I could have put her coat on her. And then we go out and then she would have been a whole different to circumstance and God revealed to me that son I'm showing you from your promise now look at how you're reacting now look at how you're how are you going to be able to do this when you're out and about around people so now it's like nine o'clock ten o'clock just come back from a hospital appointment it's meant to go on to the next one they cancelled it within seconds I literally looked because it's all on apps and stuff now. So I looked on the app. I said, like, okay, let's, let's just double check, see how much time I have until I go on to the next one. And it just said cancelled. I'm like, wow, wait a minute. I was so close. So I thought, okay, let me call these people just to double check. I'm still livid. I'm still, you know, from the morning, I calmed down completely and I cleaned the, the, dog, the dog bed, did everything that was necessary and cleansed the, every single thing around. Um, groom Rako as well, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Did everything that kind of it actually all of it calmed me down. But then hours later, I'm livid again because they cancelled our health appointment. And all I'm thinking is, oh, they did this last time and the time before, and and I'm mounting myself up to when the person answered the phone. And I had to just say to them, hold on one second, just before they spoke. Um, I gave them my name and my details so they could type all that on the system, and I came away. Real sick, I just one second. I walked out of the room. Okay, Keith, display Jesus, talk like Jesus, engage like Jesus. In fact, Keith, right now, breathe like Jesus, so you can have an understanding like Jesus, so that you can have wisdom and 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 processing and and get a development and a fore plan and an after plan like Jesus. Like I'm telling you, it 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 really worked. And I came back on the phone, and as soon as they they finished, God bless you. And I was like, wow. Wow. Yeah, I, I need to be illustrative and representative of what Jesus is like in everything I do. Last quick thing, that um, illustration. Yesterday, a, a person stepped right on my dog's paw while we were out. She's doing assistance dog work and didn't only just step on her. He stayed on her and couldn't work out what that screaming sound was. And it was my dog trying to wrench her paw out from underneath his foot. Now, whew, I could tell you, back in the day, I would barge him off. I would barge him off. Get off my dog. What are you doing? And everybody else. And I was just like, no, display like Jesus. Illustrate like Jesus. Sorry, you're okay. That I even noticed with, with my dog screaming, she actually went to go and check on the guy to see if he was okay. And I was like, wow, look at that, Lord. In a space of a day, you're showing me these constant constant things from a vow that I made, that I illustrated, that I displayed that, Lord, this is what I want to be like. And God had made me have to prove it. He had to prove it. And I'm like, mm, Lord, you know what? This is a precedence that I need to maintain and I need to continue and I need to sustain. It's fascinating. And what Junior shared this morning, the simple things of what we practice when hidden, they need to be displayed in public because what God has us out here for, if we are displaying things that we hide in secret, but don't practice in secret, he's going to basically, how useful will we be for his kingdom? Like as Junior displayed, it's not transparent windows anymore. It's like you've graffitied all on the outside of it. It's like you've painted your own windows to make it look nice, but yet will people come in? Will we welcome Christ into them? Because we are all his, his, his personified adverts. We advertise, we market for Christ. 
we are his shared gospel and we got to be the illustrators of it and i find this a very beautiful topic a very beautiful kind of foundation because like junior said and like junior exposed we all have parts of us that need to be pruned sometimes i'm like lord from 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 the service from from um sunday till now it's like, yeah, Lord, some things don't need a little dainty pruning. They need the whole branch ripped out from the side. I'm serious. It's, uh, and when you recognize these aspects and you learn how to kind of like to expose these character flaws and it's internal, it's stuff that you feel you don't display, but you actually do. It'll be the reason why somebody may ignore you or be the reason why somebody will look, want to walk towards you and ask you something. But just that, that little last second and they will divert just like going into a shop that's way too dark, like he, 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 he illustrated. It's very foundational and it always starts from within us. What do we lay in foundation? What do we display in completeness? None of us are the finished article, but it's better like junior said in the in the teaching it's better to not to agree to doing all these different things but if we are going to we have to stand by what we agreed to we have to actually double check i mean we've got calendars and all these different things nowadays but do we recognize that though in the busy and the hustle and bustle of our day do we qualify these things though do we double check these things though but it's also our character in the midst of that so thank you junior for such a a beautifully eloquent and illustrative uh, devotion today. God bless you all. Praise be to God. Uh, thank you, Keith, for uh, sharing um, aspects of uh, your person in terms of what you go through and in terms of your personal experiences. Um, thank you. Is there anybody else that uh, wants to share something in re in response to what they've heard this morning, um, whether by comment or you just want to pray into a particular area? Um, please feel free to do so. If there's anybody, um, I suspect there should be a response because it was a, a very provocative message that everybody, it relates to every single person. Okay, go ahead, Marcia. Yes. Um, yeah, devotion, it was uh, mind, mind capturing. And um, I love the illustration of the shop front and uh, um, the uh, the contents of the shop. It was just um, so um, trans um, transparent the way Junior explained it all. And um, yeah, and you know, um, the only thing that I was gonna say, right, but that's me personally, right? Is that I will I will find it very, very hard to get angry with God and to be truthful to God as I'm angry with you, you know, because I understand how God works that things that um um things that um look confusing to us will work out for our good and so um for me to to develop that sort of uh, attitude as if you know I'm being honest with you now god I am angry with you you know I cannot even imagine, you know, to be angry with God because he's been so merciful to me. You know, he's been so, all, all along the years of my life, so compassionate. So even when I was 
and no no righteousness at all and no holiness at all. He took me in when my mouth was filthy and dirty. He took me in and he trained me up. And um yeah, I just I just find that it would be a bit pompous of me to turn into God and say to him that I'm angry with you. You know, I can't see any reason why I would be angry with God, you know, and that's to be be truthful, you know. I mean, other people might find reasons why they're angry with God, but I cannot find one reason why I would be angry with God. And even when things don't work out the way that I want it, you know, like, um, you know, it doesn't mean that it's God's fault, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Amen, Marcia. Well, God is perfect in all his ways. And uh, whatever he says, whatever he's done, does is sovereign. And uh, who can question God? And uh, I know that human nature can always question God. But who truly can question God and prove God to be wrong? <laughs> no one. <laughs> Hallelujah. So praise be to God. Um, thank you. Thank you, Marcia, for sharing that. And it's true. Um, I don't feel I, I don't feel angry towards God in, in any respect because I know that God is sovereign. God is God. He's our creator. He created me, and I'm thankful that I can even be called a son of God. I'm thankful. Bless you. Um, Beverly, go, go ahead. Hi. Um, You're welcome. Go ahead. Uh, okay. <clears throat> With the anger bit, I know that God loves me 100%. He laid his life out for me. He saved me. But there was a period in my life that I just did not understand. I was so hurt and angry. I was, I was livid. I was so hurt. And I kept on saying, God, why, why, why did you allow this? Why, why? And normally, the Holy Spirit would pull me and say something, but there was nothing. But then, when I got over, um, and I also did a painting because I was so hurt, and somebody saw it the other day, and they went, "You were you." It really um, depicts hurt, and. Um, God does want us to be honest, and it's and I'm not denying that um, He loves me a hundred percent. But that was a time that I just could not understand why I had to go through that. Now, coming going through it, it was like an onion, and the layers started to come undone. And what I found out through that was it was witchcraft. So the thing that I'd gone through, it was it yeah it was witchcraft. Uh, but then because I'd um, I'd gone through that, and the revelation that God was taking me through. You know, I like God. I'm so sorry, but I never understood. But I went through that so I can understand other things, if that makes sense. Yes. So it wasn't. God knew that I was going to be hurt. He knew that I. I was just so hurt because I'd been used to 
Holy Spirit speaking to me in a way that I that if there was anything the Holy Spirit would speak to me and I just never got nothing but you know when the Holy Spirit and God is showing you something but you don't understand it there was glimpses of things but I just never understood it until I'd actually gone through the other end and I could see what was going on and what had taken place so I have a, a an understanding of the things that are in the spirit that I didn't know before That's 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 it. Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, Beverly, for sharing that. And uh, look, we don't know everything, um, but you know, there's always opportunity to understand God more through mm -hmm. intimacy of relationship with Him. Yeah. And I, I believe that the more you devote yourself to God and the more you God moves through you administrates through you you yeah. tend to understand him more it's like anything uh, if it, well let's put it like this I'm I'm with I, I've been married for 40, 40 odd years now and uh, obviously the way I knew Grace when I first got <laughs> got married it's not the same way I know her now so I mm -hmm. know what the uh, pleases her and what doesn't please her I know just put it like this I know when not to push buttons you don't enter into certain conversation because they can be sensitized and they can be emotive and it can solicit response that you don't want to see and so you're wise and because you understand the person better, you're able to synergize with the person, you see. And that's what it is with God. You're able to synergize with God more so that because of your continued relationship with him. A lot of people don't understand God because it's a religion. Can I, can I say that? It's a religion. It's an act of worship. It's an act. It's an outward appearing. You see, but I, I believe that as in the natural, so in the spiritual, that when a baby is born, they have all the potential of an adult. But that baby will not come out of that womb talking like a grown up. If that happened, you, well, I'm not going to say you're going to be frightened to death, but you certainly question how that person's talking, just coming out of the womb. There is stages of growth in terms of relationship and uh and so that's the important thing relationship 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 you see and <laughs> so the anger that you might portray out of frustration and I, I have children and i see i've seen my children angry actually children angry but they express it in different ways it's like my son, who is the eldest. He might be angry, but he doesn't express it in a way that I expect people to express anger. He's very calm about it, <laughs> very calm. And yet there's my other son, who when he expresses anger, you know he's angry and you think, woo-wee. And you have, if you've got a wig, or, well, I haven't got a wig, I, I, I hear peace, it would blow off your head because, wow, you just don't want to go there. Uh, thankfully, uh, I haven't had many occasions, but I've seen that. But when I've seen it, I thought, wow. You see, so all I'm saying is about relationships and it's how you interact with the person. You can diffuse certain things and, uh, and you can, because this, dealing with people, let me say this, dealing with people is that you can see anger in people. They express anger and they exp can express it in such a blunt way to even say, use the words hate. 
And when that word comes out of a person, it almost puts a dagger in your heart and you say, no, you can't talk like that. And, but it's easy to say you can't talk like that when person's expressing anger, anger and they don't understand what's happening in their life. You have to adjust accordingly and perhaps try and understand it from their perspective. And it is ultimately about relationship, relationship. And um, that's what I would say. But we are all growing in the grace of Almighty God. And it's a daily walk with God. And it's one thing we should all know is that it is God that works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That's Christ in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Thank you. Thank you, Beverly, for sharing that and from a different perspective. And uh, bless you. Um, if there's anybody else that has something to say quickly, please just someone put up their hand before and I, it came down. I can't remember who it was. I think it was Audrey. I don't know if, was it Audrey? I don't know if uh, you're, you may be working or something like that, but if you have opportunity to share, please do so. Uh, it was me. Um... Thank you, um, Junior, for what you shared. It's, it's a very intimate subject um, from my perspective. Um, as you said, um, Pastor Chris, it's very, very much about relationship. Um, for me, relationship is something I've always found very, very difficult. Um, as, and as uh, Sister Beverly um, shared, it's sometimes, not even sometimes, for me personally, it's because of coming from a place of hurt, being hurt, um, even by people very, very close to you. So you can be very wary and you can put up guards um, so that people just see a facade, a bit like having, as you said, a shop. You could have a shop front, but the shop front doesn't look inviting. And sometimes that's on purpose because you only want people to come in if they're genuine, if they really want what you're offering. And if if they don't, you don't want them to come in to browse because often when they come in and browse, they cause damage, they cause hurt. So it can be a way of kind of filtering out undesirable <laughs> attraction, if you see what I mean. Yes. Um, and it's a tactic that is used actually um, especially if, for example, where you have shops in an area where there's a lot of graffiti and crime and things like that, um, you don't put your best jewellery out in the shop front because you don't want people to smash the window and come and take your stuff. Um, people who know you personally will come in. They know which bell to press. They know which door to come through. Um, they know which floor you're on. And, and they know how to approach you. And so it can become a real guard uh, and a, a form of security, uh, seeking to keep yourself safe. And um, through my personal walk with the Lord, um, he's got us so patient and he really does know us. He knows where we're coming from. And my experience is he's he's a loving father. I I call I call Jesus my husband. He's not just father. He's not just friend. He's my husband. He knows me intimately, and he's demonstrated that so many times. Um, and in in a nutshell, I'm just saying that um, what I've learned on this walk is that um. If, if I trust God, I'm going to be honest with him. That's what he's asked of me, to be honest with him. And that does include when you, when you get frustrated. You might not necessarily be angry, but I have met people who are angry and they're feuding and they'll tell you, I'm an atheist. But when you drill down, they're not really an atheist. They're just angry at God and they've turned, they want to turn their back on him. But 
then they're actually looking for God to answer them in that place of being angry because they want to understand why they didn't, why did their brother die? Why was their child taken away from them? Why have I got cancer? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's kind of like a, a child stomping their feet and rolling on the ground and you could want to run away from that child. They're embarrassing you, <laughs> you know, but God doesn't do that. He actually comes to us in that distress, if we're honest. And the thing about a child that's angry with their parent is that when the parent stoops down to their level and says, why are you doing that? And they give them the words. And that's the thing about the Holy Spirit. If, if we acknowledge that we are his children, even in that place of anger, or even rebellion, we can, God can work with us when we're honest. But he says in Revelation that if we're lukewarm, he spews us out. So we can be cold, we can be hot, but don't be lukewarm, don't be pretentious, don't put on an act, um, don't be a hypocrite, be genuine. And um, that's one of the things that God has taught me. And Proverbs, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. So in all your ways means all. So as you said, all the gambit of emotions that you might ever experience, be honest and God can work with us. He can equip us with words. Children don't have words to express how they're feeling. So they scream. But God, he's, he's a teacher. And the Holy Spirit is a teacher. And if we're genuine and we're honest, he gives us a language, even speaking in tongues or whatever else, as Sister Beth said, painting, you know, a way of expressing what's going on so that we're not just bottling it up and holding it inside and letting it turn to cancer, but God can actually do open heart surgery and remove that nucleus, which is actually cancerous and potentially lethal, and, and we can experience new life. And the other thing that um, I've had to deal with in my life is pride and haughtiness, because um, especially in the Christian world, where if you've been in it for a long time for me it's decades now um you can know the walk and the talk you know to find art but god knows our hearts and uh, okay people might look at you and say wow you're so holy you're so spiritual you're this you're that but there can be you can even be proud in that you can say well you know like um the parable where jesus said that you know the the, the, the tax collector was beating his chest because he recognized that he's a sinner, but the, the priest, the religious ruler, who says, oh, thank you, Lord, I'm not like this tax collector. You're, you're 10 times worse. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I've, I've learned that love, God loves the position of humility and he, he works with the humble. Um, and uh, I mean, when I think about it, you can't be more, uh, you can't be higher than Jesus. But even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane had to wrestle with his flesh and said, you know, Lord, if you could take this thing from me, I'd be so happy. But then he had to submit and say, not mine, will, but thine. And the position of, of haughtiness is you might think, well, it's not wrong to recognize your achievement or to look back and see where you've come from. Um, but if you're not careful, the enemy can step into that and you can start to see yourself as greater than you actually are. Um, and you kind of have to realize that you didn't make yourself. It's actually God that's working in you, like the potter in the clay. So um, all we do is stand there. Um, it's God who's doing the work in us. So whatever people see of us, as as um, Brother Julia said, they're, they're looking at what God is doing in you. You can't see it because you're the, you're the vessel and it's the potter who sees what's going on. And those on the outside who are witnesses, they witness what God is doing in your life. 
Um, but the moment you start looking at yourself and seeing, look what I've done, um, you're, you're taking the glory for yourself. And God said, he won't give a gl his glory to anybody else. Um, and that includes me. He's not going to give his glory to me, even though it's work that's happening in my life. The glory doesn't go to me. It goes back to him. And um, so I've, I've learned that the minute you start to say, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. It's not you that's right. It's God that's right. We're, we're sinners. Um, and I've had to learn that as well, that even Jesus said, speak the truth in love. And you can think that you know what love is, but we actually don't. Um, God is love. And who knows the depths and the heights and the breadth of, of God's love? Um, our place is actually obedience and submission. And it always is. It nev that never changes. And I, this is what I've learned. And, and I'm still learning on my walk. And um, haughtiness is, is the beginning of pride. Pride is what caused Satan to be kicked out of heaven um, because he felt that he was bigger than God and he could take the place of God. Um, and pride brings destruction. You can't recover from destruction. You you might recover from um, a fall, which is what haughtiness brings. Um, and um, a righteous man can fall seven times, but then he can get back up um, through repentance. Um, but pride brings destruction. And I mean, we can see what that has brought to the world. It's It's devastating. So... I'm just sharing my walk and I thank you for the platform and for your honesty. And, and I pray that somebody's blessed with what I shared as well. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you for your openness and your honesty and your transparency. And uh, thank you, Audrey. Yeah, there's so much uh, that one can uh, reflect on in respect of what you shared. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, Letty, go ahead. Catch me with, catch me with my hands wet. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. I, I have a testimony. Now, I think that when I first came on, I was having some issues with my kids. I'm still having some issues with my kids because I don't see them. But, like... Um, we just had Mother's Day and I didn't know Mother's Day was coming up because, you know, like you see all the adverts and everything on TV leading up to Mother's Day. Well, I was fasting. And I was on this weird fast of communications. I wasn't fasting from food or anything, just communications. So no TV, no internet, no phone, no visitors, no, t I wasn't talking to people apart from my carer. That was it. Just no talking. Nothing. For three days. So on that, on the Sunday morning, I was supposed to be, well, Sunday afternoon, a friend of mine was supposed to be coming over and helping me put some stuff together, some furniture together. And I got a message on the Sunday morning from my daughter. Happy Mother's Day. I'm like, oh, happy, oh thank you, baby. That's so sweet. La, la, la. And I'm thinking, happy Mother's Day. Yeah, yeah. I never see my kids. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moment and moment, grand, grand. And then I messaged my friend and I said to him, look, um, it's Mother's Day. So uh, how about rain check? And you go see your mom. <laughs> so I didn't get my visit so I was by myself Mother's Day moan moan groan groan so anyway my son at lunchtime sends me a Mother's Day message and again I'm like look how is Mother's Day going to be happy when I never see my kids so late in the evening he responds to my message and he says why are you not happy oh well let me let me actually read his actual words where are you son 
Right, what he said was, uh, I said it was a day not special when you don't see your children. And he said, whether you saw us or not, we love and appreciate you and all the hard work and sacrifice you made to raise us. Oh, lovely. I was in shock. So he sent that at six o'clock or seven o'clock in the morning on the Monday morning. It took me till 11 o'clock in the evening to kind of get over the shock before I responded. <laughs> I was like, thank you, my darling son. It's lovely to have that acknowledged with seven shocked faces. <laughs> I'm just like, wow. <laughs> I was just like did that really happen <laughs> wow did, did, did that really happen yeah. <laughs> look at the Lord ain't he good and I, the thing is I've made a habit of you know I, I will pray real hard on my face once because I know God hears me I don't need to pray a gazillion times he's heard me he's understood me he knows my heart I know his heart he will answer me when he's ready and he will answer how it needs to be answered because if I keep sticking my beak in there and I get other people to, you know, like there's a scripture that says where two of the, but when, when two agree in his name, he will answer your prayer or something like that. Words to that effect. So if you, st if you stick your beak in, and insist on something being answered the way you want it answered, when you want it answered, in his name, with agreement, his hands are tied and he kind of will do it. But if you leave him alone and let him do what he's doing, he'll do it better. Amen. He will do it better. Amen. Praise God. Thank, thank you, um, Letty, um, for just sharing your testimony and uh, you know that God met you invariably at the point of your need, your heart's desire. Sometimes we have a desire, but God says. Let me just go one step further and just meet you at your heart's desire. And uh, he's able to do that and to show himself faithful and a good God and a gracious God. And uh, and the, all the time that word comes to that scripture comes to me unto him then who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we can even ask, think, imagine, dream, or even fathom. According Absolutely. To, yep. And according to the power, and it's the power God is love, power of his love that resides in us. You know, and so God is more than able. Even you might not be on your mind, but he knows your heart. Praise be to God. And that's the God that we serve. Praise him. Hallelujah. Um, just, thank just before you go ahead. Just before, just before you finish, no, I just wanted to. Um, I think while I was listening to Sister Audrey and uh, something uh, obviously she said as well, but that remind bring me back to what I think I've kind of ended with, in the sense of like, um, if you deny the, uh, like Christ says, if you deny me before others, he will deny you before the Father, and uh, yeah. sometimes we can look at that in one sense, um, that we're denying only when we're in front of people and asking uh, as in according to about christ so according to that statement we would say 
oh, if someone says, is Jesus is Lord? And we say no. Or if someone forced us and say, renounce Jesus um, or we will kill you, then, you know, and then that's sometimes we can look at it only in that way. But the Lord says to me, as in the spirit says to me, but what about the time that you're saying to your own brethren, like I've said before, making a vow or saying yes when you mean really mean no, that you're, you're actually denying Christ because Christ, the Christ in you, you're denying the truth for someone else. And that actually brought me to that attention. I was like, wow, I never looked at it in that way. So all the time we probably physically look at it as someone says, is Christ the Lord? Is, <laughs> in it. It's true. Is Christ God? And we say, oh, you know, he is God or he's not God. And we say, that is what Christ is saying. But when, I, when, I, when now the Holy Spirit kind of convicts us, says, yeah, but it's not just that time. It's all the other times that you stand in front of your brothers, maybe in private or whatever, and you say that you're going to do something and you do not do it. You're, you're, it's like you deny Christ to your brother, to your sister in that spirit of a moment. And I'm like, wow, we might be in a bit of trouble. <laughs> Lord, forgive us. But anyway, um, yeah, I just wanted to add that. So thank you, uh, Sister Audrey, for that. Amen. Praise be to God. Thank you, Junior. And uh, bless, we've had a blessed time in the presence of our Lord. It's, it's, uh, and uh, we've been provoked this morning in so many ways. And I would say provoked to do good works and noble activities in the Lord. And that is so important. And so I'm just going to ask um, Keith if you could just play us out in a song. Uh, I know it's relevant to what has been shared this morning. And so I just say, extend my love towards each and every one of you again and just say thank you for coming and sharing and being a part of what God is doing through this ministry and uh, through, especially through our manservant, um, Junior, at this time. So, Father, we thank you and we bless your holy name. And we continue to keep commit everything into your hands, knowing that you are sovereign and that you are love, Lord, and that you are yea and you are amen. And so be it in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Keith, go ahead. Everybody else, have a blessed and empowered day. Make a difference wherever you are. Let your light so shine before men that they say may see your good works and come to glorify your Father who is in heaven. So thank you. Bless you. Um, see you by God's grace tomorrow. Amen. Bye, everybody. Go ahead, Keith.